Thanks. Let me just get this thing working. So, uh-oh, open office, come on. Slideshow, there we go. Ah, there we go. So uh, my name is Claude Arpin. These are micro bits. I'll uh, let you play with them, pass them around, and I want them back. <laughs> <laughs> So the microbit and their worldwide rush to teach coding. What's happening? Well, a lot of countries, if, okay. Uh, 86 billion ARM Cortex processors sold since 1990. The ARM means advanced risk machine. So what they did, they made the code smaller inside the processor so they could make the processors more powerful. Since then, 86 billion of these processors have been sold. So this is all in your iPhones, your iPads, in, uh, everything is uh, IoT, etc. If you take the memory, that's 46 quadrillion bytes of memory that has to be filled with code. That's an enormous amount of code. And a lot of countries, 20 countries, have started massive programs to teach coding at a young age. So starting around 10 years old. And if we see uh, the UK, US, Australia, smaller countries like Croatia, Estonia, et cetera, are seeing that this is the, you know, the new wave. So we wanted our kids to learn a skill that they'll use all their lives. So uh, we must not fall behind. Uh, in Canada, we're, we're pretty good in programming, but the, the world's catching up. So this is the micro bit. This was invented by the BBC uh, in the 80s, they had done a computer that had a lot of success and was used to teach kids programming. So they've done it again. It, as you see, it's a small computer. Uh, on one side, you've got some LEDs, buttons, stuff. On the other side, the processors, the connections and stuff. So I'll give you a bit more detail. If I can get the thing going. Okay. So first of all, it's a tool... It's a tool geared for kids. They could have used a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino, but they wanted something that the kids would really like, have fun uh, using. So they came up with this design. It has 25 LEDs on one side, a matrix, so they can, they can put code, they can uh, show messages, they can put uh, drawings and stuff like that on the, the, that side. It has Bluetooth, so it could talk to a phone, it could talk to a, uh, uh, an iPad or or something, well, you know, I like Apple, eh? Uh, there's an accelerometer and a compass inside, so they can play games, so they shake it or they move it, and uh, they can see what happens. There's some analog and digital IOs, a bit like uh, an Arduino, so they can interface with the real world, and it can work uh, with batteries or USB operated. Now, we have to talk about code. So the coding environment, they, uh, they have multiple coding environments. One of them is Python. The easiest one is the block editor. It's developed by Microsoft. And it's really a visual editor that's very easy to use to teach kids about coding. So I'll show you. I have a, a slide on that. You can also use uh, JavaScript, but you don't have the, you know, the, the block type of, uh, you have just actual code. And Python also. There's an online Python editor, so people who want to learn Python, they can go on the uh, microbit.org website and find this Python editor and play around with it. And it's, uh, it's all free, of course. Uh, what's good about Python? Well, it's the perfect thing to introduce kids to uh, uh, programming, but it opens the door to a higher level. You can start with you know, basic stuff like you know, x -Sigal, equals 2, and uh, y equals x plus z. And then you can move up to objects and things like that. There's online tools. The uh, code is downloaded, is downloaded to the micro bit. Once you've done your code on your screen, you download it as a drag and drop. So it, the micro bit looks like a, a hard drive. So you just you know, drag it to the hard drive, and your code downloads. So it's very easy to, to learn. So this is the... Uh, 
the uh, block editor doesn't look very good on the screen though, but anyway, uh, as you can see, eh, they're, they're all blocks and they uh, connect to one another. You see these little squiggly things here. So you, oops, oops, sorry. So you see where they, you know, where they connect to each other. So it's very visual. The, uh, the students, they, you drag them from the uh, side here, the different uh, module, and you, you plug them together. So it's a visual way of looking at code. So it's, there's uh, something similar to Scratch that was designed by MIT. On the uh, left here, you've got actually a simulator that will simulate your code. And once you're happy with your code, you can download it, like I said, and it's a drag and drop. So it's for a basic to start off with, with a person who has no knowledge of programming, it's uh, quite easy to use. And remember, we're talking about kids about 10, 12 years old. So what's the benefits of teaching Python with a micro bit? Why not just teach it on a computer? So one, one of the things is that you teach kids to create, not to consume. They have hands-on, they have a, a device they can play with, and they can realize that they can actually do things, create things, and things will happen. You're, I don't know if uh, many of you uh, did a program called Blinky. Well, you know, everybody's happy. You know, they just get a one LED flashing. So with this, they can do much more. But they get the, the feedback of uh, their creation. It's a, hand a hands-on tool. It's less abstract. You know, if you're just programming a computer, it's like, you know, in the cloud. You don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't have any physical uh, aspect to it. And like I said earlier, you can start with very simple code and move up with the examples. And this is important because you have to think that the teachers also have to understand this to teach it to the kids. And like I said, you can move up uh, to object-oriented programming. And another benefit of uh, Python is it works on many platforms. So if kids have a PC at home or they have a Mac or they have uh, a Linux machine, they can still work with this, and they can work with the Python, and as they learn, they could do other things with their Python. And it seems that Python programmers are in high demand, so we hope that if you are all programmers, you'll get a good salary. This is the Python online editor, so it's not a visual like the block, so this is for uh, someone a bit more advanced, but it's the, it's the code. And uh, the same thing, you have drag and drop, you can drag it to the uh, micro bit, and it'll run on the micro bit. So what's the uh, situation in Canada? What is our role? Um, what we found in Canada, coding at a young age is not yet a priority. But we see countries like the UK, they gave out a million micro bits to all the students in the, in the country. So you've got a million kids who are exposed to programming. So we have to start to get our educators to think about the same way and also get more girls involved in programming. Why are there so few girls here? So it's, you know, it's an, it should be a natural. So for the, the Python community like you, I hope you will get involved. You'll talk to your teachers. If you have kids in school, talk to your teachers, talk to the principal, tell them that coding is uh, important. And I have to plug my company, CNOV. We make hardware. I'm talking uh, software guys, but we make hardware. We also do the programming of many of the products we do. So we sell the uh, online, the, uh, uh, the Raspberry Pi, the Arduino stuff, etc. And we're sponsoring uh, uh, the Microbit Canadian Users Group. And we're also working on a project to get 100,000 microbits into the hands of school children in Canada within the next two years. And that's it. Thank you. Um, Merci. Questions. questions. Before, before we take questions, uh, Claude, um, yeah. could you repeat the questions so that we can also respond? Yes, yes. All right, so, go ahead. Uh, are you working with Kids Go to Ness or Canada Code? That's your uh, not yet. Uh, we're just starting our, uh, we call it the Canadian Kids Coding Initiative, and we're starting to reach out to all these organizations to get them involved with this, uh, with our uh, micro bit. Uh, uh, giveaway that we hope. Uh, if you need any connection, we can maybe help. Okay, well. Uh,
I brought cards. <laughs> so definitely, if anyone else has connections, we're just starting this thing. We, uh, we appreciate if you can help us. Oh, sorry. She asked if we were involved with uh, uh, different organizations like Canadian Coding, and there's, a, there's a three or four in Canada. There's uh, one on women coding. Uh, Kids go to the nest. Uh, yeah. Uh, girls learning code. Girls learning code. Uh, uh, Canada learning code. Canada learning code. So we're trying to, to reach out to all these organizations and get them involved with our project. Yes, you can buy them micro bit. Uh, they'll be released in North America in June. We, uh, you can buy them from our website, and you get free shipping. So it's worth it, I hope. <laughs> How, much is one How much does it cost? Yeah. Okay, the micro bit Canadian is about uh, eighteen twenty dollars. Yes. What's the name again? Ubito. Ubito. U-B-E-T-E-O. U-B-E-T-E-O. U -B -E -T -E -O. So that's a, a tool for the younger. I, I was going to mention that. And there's a lot of studies that are being made at what age is the best age to start kids coding. And this is a good example that the, the, the younger they are, the better, the better they are. I think for girls, cast them is where they think it's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yes? Another tool for three years old, smaller children, regretfully might uh, swallow something from three years old. It's, it's called Code Pillar. It's programmable caterpillar, little, little robots for children. You can switch uh, program. Yeah, it's now official. Now it's, uh, it was done where? Ah, code the pillar. Ah, okay. Okay. Any more questions? Oh, yes. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Yeah, the, the micro bit uh, has all these little gadgets on it that the kids like. It also has a huge um, backing. Uh, there's a, a nonprofit organization, the Microbit Foundation uh, in the UK. Uh, so there's, there's, there's exercises, there's teaching aids for the teachers, and there's a lot of stuff around it. Uh, Kids uh, have video and stuff like that. So they did look, because it comes from the UK, as a Raspberry Pi. So they did look a lot at the Pi, but they decided on the, that final format. One other thing, all the, the uh, code and instructions and everything are in multiple, multiple languages. So you can have it in French and in uh, different languages. And other countries have done their version of the micro bit. Germany has their own version. Japan has their own version. I hope maybe Canada will have ours. What kind of microprocessor do you 
Okay, in the, uh, in the micro bit, uh, it's a uh, ARM M0 Plus. It's a NRF51 processor from uh, Nordic Semiconductor. The processor is actually the Bluetooth radio also. And it has enough room in it to add uh, the, this extra code. There's a, 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 a different, uh, a separate processor just to do the USB interface, but it doesn't do any of the coding. And the, uh, like I was talking about ARM processors, so on the micro bit, it's an ARM 0 plus. The next version of the chip is an ARM M4. So technology continues to advance. So that means like you, you have a Bluetooth radio, and in that radio, you've got a full processor that you could do all sorts of stuff with. Cool. Bon. Claude, merci. Okay, merci. Merci.